مثل نوره كمشكات فيها مصباح المصباح في زجاجة الله mentions the similitude of the light of Allah is like the example of now the example has three components an outer a middle and an inner كمشكات فيها مصباح المصباح في زجاجة now the parable the metaphor begins with the outer jumps to the innermost and then goes to the middle is that clear it doesn't go outer middle inner it goes outer innermost middle and it's a little bit disconcerting if you don't know where the eye is going by doing this allah azza wa jal has to mention what is in the middle twice and that is the maqsood or the intention of the ayah mathal nuri ka mishkatin fiha misbah al misbah fi zujaja did you guys follow the arabic misbah is mentioned twice right mathal nuri ka mishkatin fiha misbah now if you don't know arabic obviously this is being lost on you so let me translate mishkat what is a mishkat a mishkat is a crevice or a niche in the wall we don't have one here but back in the day back in the day luxurious houses you know masjids that were purpose built they would have niches in the wall to put the lantern and the purpose of the niche the purpose of that space is to protect the lantern and to project all of the lantern's light in one direction like we might have mirrors or something so back in the day they had a carved out space that carved out space is called mishkat so mathanuruhi ka mishkatin so the example of we're going to go with the interpretation that the nur is the quran here the example of the light of allah the quran is like that of a mishkat a niche that is carved in the wall inside of the niche is a misbah which is the misbah is the lamp the misbah is the uh, the actual flame the candle that's the misbah the lamp al misbah fi zujaja the candle or the lamp is inside of a glass so notice the niche the candle the glass you know the good old days then they had the lantern right imagine you have a lantern you all have seen a lantern on television i know you haven't physically touched one since god knows when but you know a lantern right you know i've seen that in the good old black and white movies okay those lanterns have glass inside the glass is a actual candle and then where do you put that lantern you put it inside of the niche in the wall okay this is the example that allah is giving now allah azza wa jalla mentions the niche then the candle then the glass and he has to mention the candle twice by mentioning the candle twice by mentioning the flame twice the maqsood or the point is to emphasize this is the whole parable this is what the parable is about and that is the original light and of course in our understanding according to today's lecture that is the quran so allah mentions the quran twice al misbah al misbah al misbah fi zujaja so that misbah is the Quran. The light of the Quran is being emanated. Now, if the interpretation of the Quran here is that candle, then what is the zujaja or the glass representing? And what is the mishkat representing? Again, you have multiple interpretations. And actually, one can say, there are multiple schools under each school there are sub schools of how you want to interpret this first so i'm just going to go with one school and one sub school because of time if we were to go down this route of the candle represents the quran then according to another group of scholars within this school the zujaja is the heart the heart is the glass and this is a beautiful beautiful metaphor for the heart because glass is fragile and it is also super hard glass is transparent and it is also translucent similarly hearts some of them are fragile and some of them are hard some of them are see-through and they're honest and some of them are double layered some of them are opposite mirrors literally hypocrites so if we were to go down the route that glass here represents the heart there's a powerful metaphor that just like glass is of so many varieties so too the heart is of so many varieties and the best glass is the most see-through glass the best glass you don't even know it's there and so too the best heart is the purest heart the best heart you can see through that person is as he is there's no double standards there's no hypocrisy there's purity over there 
And what then is the mishkat, the niche? Our scholars have said, or some group have said, the mishkat or the niche is all of the outer organs as they project the heart, the tongue, and the hands, and the limbs. So the outer organs, they project what is in the heart. And the heart inside of it is the candle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is the Qur'an. So the entire metaphor is about the heart of the believer who believes in the Qur'an. This is the metaphor according to one perspective. The heart of the believer who believes in the Qur'an. That the believer who believes in the Qur'an, that believer... His light is coming from the Qur'an. And that light is going to be protected by his heart. Because what does the heart, what does the, the zujaja do when the wind comes? When, when, the heart protects that lamp. The heart seals that lamp. The heart is where the lamp is contained. So too, the believer, his heart contains the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an that one of the miracles of the Qur'an is that it is memorized by the believers. بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي صُدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ Rather, the Qur'an is that which is memorized by the heart of the believers. So here the zujaja becomes the heart of the believer. And the mishkat then becomes the projection. What do your hands do? What do your tongue do? What does your eye do? It's going to project like the, the, the mishkat projects the light. So according to this narrative, the Qur'an becomes the guiding light.